Ken Saruwa and his eight colleagues were murdered by Nigeria's military regime after a sham trial. Their only crime was to peacefully pursue human rights for the Ogoni people and to campaign against oil spills in the oil rich Niger Delta. Their bodies were buried in an unmarked grave for almost a decade. When our family finally received my father's remains, we had to reassemble his skeleton with, core, with our own hands before giving him a dignified burial. To this day, the Nigerian government has not granted him an official pardon. It speaks volumes about our so-called democracy. No government can call itself civilized or claim any moral authority why it refuses to exonerate these innocent Can Niger thrive without Germany? Germany, once considered a so-called friend of Niger, has announced that it will end its military presence by August 31st. According to the West, this move will make things difficult for Niger. However, experts have a different perspective. They argue that a future without Western involvement could be highly beneficial for Niger. But the question remains, how can Niger survive in isolation? Perhaps Niger is considering forging new ties with other nations. Let's find out. In Berlin, an important announcement was made at the German Defense Ministry. Germany's military presence in Niger would end by August 31st. This decision came after long and difficult talks with Niger's junta, which took power in a coup in July 2023. The junta's rise led to the removal of President Mohamed Bazoum and changed Niger's diplomatic direction, breaking ties with Western allies and turning to Russia and Iran. This shift has big effects, raising questions about regional stability, international relations, and the future of foreign military presence in the Sahel. How did the coup in Niger unfold? And what is its relation with the German military leaving Niger? Black lives we matter outside of Africa only when they matter in Africa itself. I repeat, black lives we matter outside of Africa only when they matter in Africa itself. Und das ist genau das, was ich immer sage. Das ist unser Problem. The coup that overthrew Niger's government was both quick and shocking, causing waves throughout the international community. On what seemed like an ordinary day in July 2023, President Mohamed Bazoum, a strong ally of the West, was removed from power in just a few hours. Tanks rolled through the streets of Niamey, and soldiers took control of important government buildings. The bustling city suddenly became quiet and tense. People going about their daily lives now face an uncertain future, wondering what direction their country will take next. Right after the coup, there was a lot of political and social chaos. The new military leaders quickly took control, tearing down existing political structures and putting their people in charge. Diplomatic relations with the United States and France, Niger's former colonial ruler, cooled almost instantly. This was a big change from the previous government's policies, which were marked by close ties with Western nations and a commitment to democracy. In a bold move, the junta formed new partnerships with Russia and Iran, signaling a major shift in the country's foreign policy. This change mirrored what happened in neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso, both of which also had military coups and were dealing with jihadist insurgencies. Aligning with Russia and Iran wasn't just about diplomacy, it was a strategy to get military and economic support without the strict conditions that often come with Western aid. The coup had immediate visible effects on daily life. The once lively streets of Niamey were now patrolled by soldiers. Curfews and military checkpoints became common, showing the junta's efforts to tighten its grip and prevent any counter-coup attempts. For many citizens, this time was filled with fear and uncertainty as their usual routines were disrupted by the new regime's drastic changes. Within weeks, the military leaders made their plans clearer. By partnering with Russia and Iran, they promised military aid and economic cooperation, which they saw as crucial for stabilizing the country 
and dealing with ongoing threats from jihadist groups. This new approach was very different from the previous administrations, which had depended heavily on Western military and financial support. The junta's shift away from traditional allies highlighted the significant changes happening in Niger's political scene. The coup in Niger wasn't just a change in leadership. It was a fundamental shift in the country's geopolitical stance. The quick and decisive nature of the coup, along with the immediate changes in international relations, showed the deep impact of the junta's rise to power. This dramatic shift set the stage for further developments, including the negotiations and eventual withdrawal of German troops from Niger, illustrating the complex interplay of local politics and international alliances. How did Germany view this situation? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. According to Germany, its role in Niger was relatively low-key but important, aimed at helping stabilize the Sahel region. The Bundeswehr, Germany's armed forces, operated a small airbase in Niamey, the capital. This base, staffed by 38 Bundeswehr soldiers and 33 workers from German and foreign companies, was crucial for evacuating German nationals from Africa and supporting various humanitarian missions. Germany's presence in Niger was part of a larger effort to tackle the many challenges in the Sahel, from insurgencies to political instability. The Bundeswehr's airbase in Niamey was essential for Germany's military and humanitarian operations in the region. It allowed for the safe evacuation of German nationals from crisis areas across Africa and served as a hub for coordinating and delivering humanitarian aid to conflict and disaster zones. This dual role highlighted the base's strategic importance not just for Germany, but for international efforts to stabilize the Sahel. In May, Germany and Niger reached an interim agreement allowing the Bundeswehr to continue its operations at the airbase until the end of August. This agreement provided temporary relief, but extending the Bundeswehr's presence proved challenging. A key issue was the legal immunity for the base's personnel, a standard provision that the new junta was unwilling to support. This refusal reflected broader tensions between the new regime and its Western counterparts, complicating efforts to maintain a cooperative relationship. According to Germany, the Bundeswehr's presence in Niger was more than just military and humanitarian missions. It was part of a broader strategy to support regional stability and counter-violent groups. They said, the Sahel region, including Niger, has faced violent extremism and insurgencies that threaten both local populations and international security. Germany's efforts in Niger were aimed at addressing these threats, contributing to a comprehensive approach to regional stability. However, the changing political landscape in Niger made these efforts more difficult. The junta's pivot towards Russia and Iran introduced new challenges to Germany's operations and strategic goals. The refusal to grant legal immunity to Bundeswehr personnel was a sign of these broader issues, reflecting a growing divide between the new regime and its Western partners. This divide had significant implications for Germany's future involvement in the region and its overall strategy for the Sahel. But the question that remained unasked was why the junta leader did not want ties with Germany. Back in 2021, cooperation seemed favorable between Niger and Germany. After a period of rest, the two nations rekindled their development partnership. Berlin pledged a generous 120 million euros in aid over two years to foster peaceful societies, transform food systems, and improve health policies in Niger. This collaboration was a beacon of hope, promising a brighter future for a country often plagued by poverty and instability. Germany's commitment extended beyond financial aid. Since 2018, German military experts have been training Niger's special forces, enhancing the country's capacity to tackle security threats. In 2023, the European Union planned to support this effort by deploying up to 60 German soldiers to boost Niger's military. However, as this ambitious operation began to unfold, an unexpected event in July 2023 derailed these plans. A military coup erupted, plunging Niger into uncertainty. The coup, led by a charismatic yet enigmatic junta leader, sent shockwaves through the international community. Western powers, including Germany, reacted swiftly, suspending all direct support payments to Niger's central government and halting ongoing cooperation. The European Union, 
mirroring Germany's stance, cut financial and security assistance. The once promising partnership was now at a standstill. Why does the junta leader bother with Germany so much? Before talking about that, let's understand why the junta leader didn't force Germany to stop. One key aspect to consider is the nature of Western aid itself. Financial assistance from countries like Germany is often accompanied by stringent conditions. These conditions typically include demands for political reforms, human rights safeguards, and mechanisms for accountability. While these measures are intended to promote stability, democracy, and human rights, they can be perceived differently by the recipients. From the junta leader's perspective, rejecting or resisting these conditions is defending national sovereignty and asserting independence from foreign influence. This stance resonates with nationalist sentiments among the populace, potentially garnering domestic support for the regime. The leader argues that accepting aid with conditions compromises the nation's dignity and self-determination. So, in the end, why did negotiations between Germany and Niger break down? The negotiations between Germany and Niger were fraught with difficulties from the outset, reflecting deep-seated mistrust and conflicting priorities. Throughout the summer, diplomats and military officials from both sides engaged in protracted discussions, attempting to find common ground on key issues. However, the talks were marred by a fundamental lack of alignment, with each side prioritizing different aspects of the agreement. The German Defense Ministry emphasized the importance of legal protections for its personnel, a standard provision in international military agreements. Without these legal safeguards, the continued presence of the Bundeswehr in Niger posed significant risks, not just for the personnel involved, but for Germany's broader strategic interests in the region. The issue of legal immunity became a major sticking point in the negotiations. For Germany, ensuring that its personnel were protected under international law was non-negotiable. This legal immunity is a standard provision in many military agreements, providing assurances that soldiers and support staff would not be subject to local judicial processes for actions taken in the course of their duties. However, the Nigerian junta, emboldened by its newfound alliances with Russia and Iran, was unwilling to concede on this point. The junta's refusal to grant legal immunity was indicative of broader geopolitical shifts and a growing reluctance to accommodate Western military forces. As the negotiations dragged on, it became increasingly clear that a resolution was unlikely. The junta, confident in its pivot towards Russia and Iran, saw little benefit in accommodating Western military forces. This confidence was bolstered by promises of military and economic support from its new allies, which provided an alternative to the traditional reliance on Western aid and cooperation. For Germany, the situation grew untenable. Without the necessary legal safeguards, the continued presence of the Bundeswehr in Niger posed unacceptable risks, both legally and operationally. The impasse underscored the complexities of international diplomacy, and the challenges of maintaining foreign military operations in a rapidly changing geopolitical environment. The breakdown in negotiations was not just about legal immunity. It reflected deeper strategic and political divergences. The Nigerian junta's alignment with Russia and Iran was part of a broader realignment in the Sahel region, where several countries were re-evaluating their relationships with traditional Western allies. This realignment had profound implications for regional stability and international security, complicating efforts to address the ongoing threats posed by jihadist groups. The changing alliances introduced new dynamics that made it difficult for Germany and other Western nations to maintain their presence and achieve their strategic objectives. On a sweltering Saturday in late July, the German Defense Ministry made the official announcement all Bundeswehr soldiers stationed at the Niamey Air Base would be withdrawn by August 31st, and German military cooperation with Niger would come to an end. This statement marked a significant moment in Niger's geopolitical realignment and highlighted the shifting balance of power in the Sahel region. The breakdown in negotiations not only ended Germany's military presence, but also signaled a broader shift in the region's international alliances. This shift had significant implications for the future of Western involvement in the Sahel, raising questions about the ability of international actors to effectively address the complex challenges facing the region. Now the question is, what will the end of Germany and Niger ties mean for Niger? The departure of the Bundeswehr signifies a critical step towards reclaiming Niger's sovereignty. 
For decades, Western military presence has been justified under the guise of security and humanitarian aid, yet many argue that it has perpetuated a form of dependency and undermined local governance. By ending its reliance on German military support, Niger has the opportunity to reassert its autonomy and strengthen its national institutions without external interference. This move can be seen as a bold assertion of self-determination, resonating deeply with the broader African struggle against neocolonialism. As Niger navigates away from traditional Western alliances, it opens the door to diversify its diplomatic relations. The junta's pivot towards Russia and Iran, while controversial, represents a strategic effort to explore alternative partnerships that do not come with the same historical baggage of exploitation and control. These new alliances may offer Niger more favorable terms of cooperation, focusing on mutual respect and benefit, rather than the asymmetrical power dynamics often seen with Western nations. This shift can potentially lead to more balanced and equitable international relations, fostering a sense of dignity and empowerment for Niger and its people. The end of German military ties also holds economic implications. Western aid and military support have historically come with strings attached, often influencing domestic policies and financial priorities. Freed from these constraints, Niger now has the opportunity to pursue economic policies that align more closely with its national interests and development goals. By engaging with a broader range of international partners, Niger can negotiate better terms for investment and aid, focusing on sustainable development and infrastructure projects that directly benefit its population. This move towards economic independence is crucial for building a resilient and self-sufficient nation. Niger's shift away from Western influence can also strengthen regional solidarity and collaboration within Africa. As neighboring countries like Mali and Burkina Faso undergo similar transitions, there is an emerging opportunity for these nations to unite and address common challenges collectively. By fostering regional alliances and cooperative frameworks, African countries can develop homegrown solutions to issues such as security, economic development, and governance. This regional approach can reduce reliance on external powers and promote a more integrated and self-reliant African continent. The withdrawal of German forces necessitates a re-evaluation of Niger's security strategies. Rather than relying on foreign military presence, Niger can invest in building and modernizing its security forces. This shift can lead to the development of a more capable and autonomous defense infrastructure, better suited to address the specific threats and challenges faced by the nation. Moreover, it encourages regional cooperation on security matters allowing African nations to collectively address the root causes of instability and conflict without external intervention. The end of Germany and Niger ties marks the beginning of a new chapter for Niger, one characterized by greater sovereignty, diversified partnerships, and a focus on national and regional priorities. While the transition may come with challenges, it also offers a unique opportunity for Niger to redefine its role on the global stage and pursue a path of true independence and self-determination. By embracing this new direction, Niger can contribute to the broader African movement towards liberation from neo-colonial influence and the creation of a more just and equitable world order. So if Germany is thinking its exit will bother Niger, then they are not right. The termination of Germany's military presence in Niger should be seen not as a loss, but as a moment of empowerment and opportunity. It allows Niger to reclaim its sovereignty, diversify its diplomatic and economic relations, and strengthen regional solidarity. This pro-African perspective underscores the potential for Niger to forge a new path that prioritizes the interests and aspirations of its people, free from the shadow of Western domination. Do you think a good future awaits Niger? Will isolation from the West be the goal in the first place? What would happen if the ties ended forever? Let us know in the comment section. Will Niger have a better future without Germany? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.